The thing that's really stopping me is my headaches. I was wondering what we can do about that. I think that's a theme that I hear really, really commonly in all of the IH patients, so you're not alone there. And I think really the headache side of IH is sometimes not appreciated, um, but it's actually a very important aspect. And these headaches, you know, if they're not treated, can be very problematic for patients and may go on for a number of years. So what I would like to do is go through your headache history, and what I want to do is find out a bit more about your headaches. Um, for example, did you have headaches when you were a little girl at school? No. Did you have headaches as a teenager? No, really. no. And did you have a family history of headaches or migraines? So anybody in your family? Okay. Those kind of things can sometimes mean that you're more predisposed to migraine headaches if you had headaches when you were little or family history of migraines. Also sometimes if people are very prone to travel sickness or vertigo or recurrent abdominal pain when they're a child, that can be a marker for pre-existing migraine headaches. And what we try and do in, when we look at the headache aspect of IH is work out how much of this headache is just due to pressure, how much of it is due to pressure and other headache conditions. So we do what we call phenotyping and that means we go through very specific features of the headache to say is it all pressure and how much of it could be anything else. And the common things that we see are the IIH can either be just on its own, in which case it often settles more quickly, but in patients that have any markers of previous migraine it may be that their IIH headaches are more severe, they might present earlier and those headaches might go on for longer even once their pressure starts to come down and the eyes they start to look better, the they still have the headaches. So despite you know, the, the eyes not being at risk, the headaches are still a problem. So in those patients, it's important to say, have they got any additional features of migraine and also medication overuse? So I'll talk about those two things for a couple of minutes, if that's all right. So the, the migraine aspects, we've talked about that they may have features of as a child of migraine or as a younger adult. And I often want to know about were they having headaches for a number of years before the IIH was diagnosed? And that could be two things. It could be that the IIH has been there for a while, but it also may mean that they're a, a quite a headachey person and they've had some migraine features, so I'll look for those in the history. And the good thing about having some overlap between migraine and IIH is although you will have more severe headaches sometimes, it does mean that I can sometimes target those headaches with some of our migraine therapies. Because unfortunately up until now we haven't done any trials to say how we should exactly treat headaches in IIH. We don't have a specific IIH headache tablet. In fact the acetazolamide uh, trial showed that it didn't help with headache outcomes. So we don't have a specific tablet for headache, but we do know that we have specific well-researched um, and well-validated tablets for migraine. And we know that IIH headaches can often start to get migraine characteristics or have a mixture of migraine. So that's why I use the migraine medication for yeah. IIH headaches. And what I'm really looking for is two aspects of the approach. It's what do you do on a day when you have a really bad headache? What painkiller should you take? And then what could you take in the long term to gradually prevent and settle the headaches from occurring in the first place? So the prevention strategies take quite a long time, maybe several months to gradually just turn the headaches down. It's kind of all trial and error leading through this sort process. Of. Yeah, we know which tablets are more likely to have clinical trial evidence for migraine and we apply that to the, to the IIH patients. We're very aware of not wanting to cause side effects in IH patients, particularly we don't want to cause side effects with changes in weight or make people have increasing low mood because a lot of patients can have low mood when they have chronic pain. So we're looking to try the tablets out that are going to be most appropriate for IIH. Some of them even have crossover with helping to reduce, um, potentially reduce brain pressure by acting as a water tablet. So sometimes we go for those as a tablet called topiramate. And these tablets would be started slowly so that the dose won't work at that tiny dose but it gets your body used, used to taking to it so that you don't get side effects so much and every couple of weeks we gradually put the dose up until we get to a dose that may work and then we still have to continue it for at least three months or so to see whether it will help with the headaches. I mean I think headaches are you can't just turn a button and it goes off it's like a volume button. So is there a limit to the top dose of medication or again is that an individual thing for each person? Yeah so the, the doses of the medication will depend on what tablet we're using and we know particular ranges that will be an appropriate dose that we need to work up to for it to potentially be effective mm -hmm. but different people will tolerate them in a different, different way. way and some people might not tolerate a particular tablet and we can't get to a dose that will be helpful and we have to take it away and try something else. So that's the prevention, a very gradual, long-term strategy to prevent them coming. And then the second strategy is the acute pain relief. 
and we look for whether there's any days with acute really bad exacerbations that have any of these migrainous features such as not wanting to be in the sunshine, not wanting to be in loud noisy environments, not wanting to rush around, so wanting to keep still and lie still. Um, might make you feel a little bit nauseated or even sick. Headaches that are pounding sitting and throbbing. In <laughs> sitting in a dark room, throbbing headaches that sometimes feel like a pressure. A pounding pressure feeling in the, in the head is very much a headache that you might feel with IIH or migraine. But those features we can sometimes mean that we can target a painkiller tablet. Um, and we can talk about how to give those and also giving them with an anti-sick tablet to help patients. I've heard that I can't use too many painkillers. Yes, that's right. We do have to be careful with the amount of painkillers that's used. So we know from the headache literature that people that use more than about two days of pain relief per week, so depending on the pain relief, that's about 10 days per month of certain types of painkillers, it can actually cause the headaches to become increased and to have background well, it headaches. headaches. It can worsen the headaches and cause background headaches. So it's really important that painkillers aren't taken excessively um, because it causes this condition called medication overuse headache. So it's not a very easy term to, uh, to write down, but MOH, medication overuse headache, and that's this situation where you know, it's very understandable. You're in pain, so you take a painkiller. You often go and get it from Boots or the pharmacy. But before you know it, you're taking codeine or paracetamol most days of the week. And then your brain gets so used to having those painkillers on board that it develops a, a, a use of them. And then it means that when you stop taking the tablets, you're going to get rebound headaches and it causes background headaches. So we need to try and talk about that with our patients and say, you know, try not to use the painkillers too much, mm -hmm. but try and use the right painkillers. Yeah, um, the guidelines now are very much not to take opiate types of painkillers. So these are things like tramadols and codeines, um, and morphine patches or oromorph. Those types of tablets are particularly uh, prone to giving people these medication, medication overuse. Yeah. But actually any of the painkillers can do it if you take them too much. So in summary, when we're talking about the pain relief to use for headaches in IIH, we talk about the painkillers in terms of not using too many of the wrong ones. And we know that if we use painkillers on too many days of the week, really more than two days a week, you can get these medication overuse headaches which cause chronic background headaches and actually make the headaches much more difficult to treat. Yeah, and we're particularly wary of the opiate medications, so um, oromorph, tramadol, but as I said before, even paracetamol and ibuprofen can cause this. Yes. So we're going to try and switch to That's really... interesting because I didn't know that. Yeah. I do think paracetamol and ibuprofen, because they're the ones that, if I do have a headache, that's what I reach for. It's fine to take them in moderation two days a week, but it's when you take them excessively that the problems come. But also we Four know... times a day every day is not recommended. It's not recommended. Yeah. But we know that also um, there are, we can get perhaps better efficacy so a better effect if we use some of the migraine specific pain relief, um, particularly the triptan therapy. That's why it's important to see your neurologist to see what type of headache you have, yeah, and if as well it, as the yeah. like a pressure headache, yeah. you can get that treated accordingly. Absolutely, because it might be something that we can help with with the headache side. Yeah. Yeah.